I want to talk about something that is near and dear to my heart. Um, as a tire, as a guide, as father, um, and that is the use of mallard flanks and how they impact, um, I'll say, the, the movement within a fly. Uh, there's a lot of $100 words, I think, getting thrown around. Um, you, you can you can over engineer flies pretty quickly, especially with um, you know some of the more complicated platforms. I think one of the beauties of Blaine's stuff is it you know relatively complex, but it it's he's he's made it um, simple in in a lot of different ways. Um, Tommy's stuff, Kelly's streamers, um, Russ's stuff. It's, it's taking complex ideas and the, you know, the, the pieces that go into it, be it material choice or how you put them together, um, distances, material manipulation. Those are the things that, you know, make your, the well, one, they make fly time fun. If you just want to have an awesome fly and go catch fish, just swing an olive woolly bugger basically anywhere. Um, you'll, you'll probably end up catching some good fish if you do it enough. That said, I enjoy tying stuff that has a lot of movement and movement that I can, to a, to a large degree, control and um, through the design process have it have it do stuff that I want. Now, ignoring entirely whether or not that's the right answer for fish, which I think it is, but ignoring that entirely, I want to talk about mallard flanks, uh, fluid velocity. I don't think I'm going to get more. I'm not going to get any fancier than that. Um, and, and how that can impact the motion of a fly because of the, the pressure, um, you know, on the top, side, bottom, and yeah, you can, you can take this and do what you like with it. This might be brutal. We're going to do something like a cougar. There's the head. Hook. Flank. And then some sort of ice dub. Let me just make sure that this is... Get out of here. Not tying. Not tying flies. All right, blank. And I will, I'll try to put in a, a little sidecar uh, video of some close-ups of, of what happens when water goes onto mallard flanks because it, um, it slides right off. It is, I don't want to use this word, but I'm about to. It's extremely hydrophobic, not not in the sense of deer hair being buoyant, but it, it's it's on the this part of ducks when they're on the water swimming and floating, like they're and they're super packed in on the chest and um, they just they don't they don't take on water and so water slides right off of them, right. That means that this is smooth. And let's just say on the bottom is some sort of rough grizzle, chenille, right?
That's rough on the bottom. And now, it's underwater and an incompressible fluid. I think, yeah, well, that's what it is. Um, a fluid, it, you can ignore some of the, the details behind it, but uh, um, an incompressible fluid it is moving over an object. One part of the object is smooth, the other part of the object is rough. And so now we'll do what this looks like as it's moving over the object. Because it is smooth, and this is gonna, for our purposes, flatten out, you don't need to worry about, um, you know, the, the airplane concept, sort of ignore that. Um, so this is just a smooth surface and a rough surface with fluid of a constant velocity. The velocity over less surface area relative to more surface area is going to be, what should I call this? What is the V1? Same amount of stuff moving over a smaller distance as opposed to moving over a greater distance. Smaller distance, all the fluid ends up, you're pulling your streamer through the water, all the water ends up back here. Starts here, ends there. In the middle is this. So same amount of stuff over a shorter distance means that the velocity at the top is lower than the velocity of the bottom. We'll call this V2, check it. Now, with a lower velocity, an incompressible, an incompressible fluid will have So we'll, we'll recap this. So velocity of the flank. It's a modified Aberdeen bend. Um, velocity of the flank, or velocity of the water over the flank is slow relative to the velocity of the water um, underneath on the on the frizzle chenille. Now we look at static pressure on on this bug. So the, the, there's different every piece of water pressing against the frizzle chenille and the flank. They all have pressure. Those are arrows pointing both ways. 
when you have an incompressible fluid that is moving more slowly, its pressure increases. When it's moving faster, it decreases. So again, smooth, slow, pressure increases. Pressure decreases when it's fast. Surface is rough. So what the hell does all that mean? It means that as you're moving something with, let's say, a smooth top and a rough bottom through an incompressible fluid, that there is going to be a net downward pressure on that object, a zoo cougar, because of the top being smooth and the bottom being rough. So I'm going to play that back an entirely different way and look at Hook shank with uh, let's say some strong fuzzy, but it's cut right here, right? And then some eyes, some epoxy. We're going to say that this is all rough cut. So no epoxy. Um, it's not super fine razor blade. This is both trimmed down with some epoxy. In addition to the rough smooth, the surface area of the head is greater than that of the flat bottom. So when you have a greater surface area relative to what is below it on, again, incompressible fluid, same stuff going over a greater surface area holding whether or not they're rough or smooth, holding their the surfaces equal. Since that is bigger than that, the velocity of the water over this will be higher. It's also rough. Higher again. pressure decreases. Not going down, that made me second think he's near, but pressure decreases. Um, smooth and less surface, you know, some epoxy, less surface area. That's why you, you can, you know, epoxy in the bottom, you know, the, the chins and cheeks and behind the eyes, will just that, keeping that bottom of the head um, smooth is going to lower the velocity of the water around that and increase pressure resulting in a net pressure up. Rough, greater surface area, higher velocity, 
that pressure is going to decrease. Smooth, shorter distance, that pressure is going to increase, and that results in a net pressure going up, independent of buoyancy. So to cut it flat, even without the epoxy, that deer hair head from Kelly stuff, um, you know, the cougar, the dungeon, you, you know, you don't, you don't need epoxy, you don't need all these other steps. If you just have a greater, um, and buoyancy, ignoring buoyancy, this will result in, as you are moving, that's the velocity of the fluid, as you are moving the fly, through the current, it is going to result in a net pressure up, which is what I refer to as keeling on the strip. So that when you move, when you strip something, it right sizes no matter what it was doing before, because the way you constructed it and what it's in, water, as a physical law, requires it to straighten out. No probably in there. Do with it what you will. And let me know if you have questions. The kickoff to these feels like you know, I, just a f***ing 10 car pile up. I want to talk about something that is near and dear to my heart.